Hi everyone, this is Dr. Blake Bloxham from Feller and Bloxham Medical, and I'm here today to introduce another episode of Scar Search. Uh, and for those unfamiliar with what Scar Search is, it's a little idea that Dr. Feller and I put together a few years ago where it's basically uh, an opportunity for us to showcase surgical scars, particularly uh, FUT or strip scars. We feel there's a lot of misinformation online when it comes to scarring after a hair transplant, particularly when it comes to the FUT or the strip procedure. So what we like to do is uh, videotape some of our patients who have had surgery when they come back in and basically put together presentations just showcasing their scars, and we call it scar search. So what I'm going to do today is actually a little bit of a compilation. Uh, these are three patients who have come in just very recently, so let's jump right in and go over their cases. So the first patient here uh, is a, what we consider a Norwood 6, which is almost as high as you can get on the hair loss scale. He's pretty advanced. Uh, he was in 12 months prior. He has a little bit of low donor density, so we did about 2,000 grafts to reframe the front and work to about the middle of his scalp. So this is how he looked when he came back 12 months later to be evaluated for a second surgery. So first thing I'm gonna do here is just kinda of give you an idea of how the donor looks. Uh, you can see he wears his hair pretty normal length and you can't see anything. So now let's start combing through. Uh, and he's an example of just a, a fantastic strip scar. Um, you can see these first couple swipes here just to show you that you really can't pick up on, on anything back here at all. Could obviously go much shorter. And I'm going to get to the scar here. I'm, I'm trying to find it myself, which is always a good thing. But right there is the strip scar. And I'm going to move around to the right, and you can get a better idea of it here. And as you can see, combing through his donor, he really doesn't have the best donor, um, which is, is why strip, the FUT procedure, is the preferred way for him to go, because he wouldn't have the donor to support FUE. One pass of FUE with him, there's the scar right there. One pass of FUE with him, and he'd be way too thinned out, which is why he needs to do a good gold standard FUT. There it is. There's the scar. Far less than a millimeter. I would say that's about point, um, I would say that's that's maybe about 0.5 millimeters on that scar. Not even a full millimeter. There it is. Good look there. As you can see, like I was saying before, it's not a thick donor and he still would have no trouble ever hiding that scar. Okay, so the next patient here is actually a Norwood 7, so one step further, the most advanced on the hair loss scale. Uh, he was in about 11 months prior, and, and I rebuilt the very similar surgery, rebuilt the front, worked a little bit into the middle, and he was back for a second one. We did about 2,500 grafts on, the, um, on him, 2,000 grafts on the first patient, and we were looking to do about another 2,000 for this surgery, but this is how he looked, uh, about 11 months later. Okay, so again, just giving you an idea of the donor, and you can see he has a lot of area to cover. Um, he's like what I said, a Norwood 7, so about as advanced as it gets. Um, and the first couple comb throughs here can really not pick up on too much. There's the scar actually right there, right underneath where that darker hair is. You can see how his hair loss is even creeping up the bottom there, but again, tough to even pick up on that scar. Right there, there it is, good. Right there. And again, uh, does not have, even though the, the, his, there's a scar right there. Good shot of the scar right there. And as I was saying, um, even though his, his, the characteristics of his hair are very good, dark, curly, good for coverage, uh, he doesn't have a lot of it. You can see it's actually a little bit thin when you comb it apart like this. And um, it's dropping all over, dropping on the sides, dropping on the back. That's that Norwood 7 pattern. So again, uh, this patient really was only suited for FUT went in, did a big FUT, and this is how the scarring ended up in his donor. Fantastic scarring, another one that's, that's a millimeter or less. Um, he could easily shave down quite low before he saw that. And we were able to do a second surgery here, get out a lot of good grafts, and continue to work further back. Okay, so the last case here uh, is actually a, on a medical doctor. He's a, he's a doctor himself. Um, this is a patient who Dr. Feller did a strip on years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. He had about 2,500 grafts, um, rebuilt the front, and he was back for his second one. To He wanted to lower and flatten a little bit because his hair loss never really continued. Um, so we did about another 2,500 graft procedure on him, uh, but this is how his scar looked years and years and years, maybe even a decade after his first one. So again, combing through, and look at that donor. My God, this scar is going to be hard to pick up just because of that donor alone. Um, but what I'm really trying to show here, Dr. Fellows is going to help me kind of show where the scars are. What I'm really trying to show here is just that, that in the big picture of things, these FUT scars are, are just 
well hidden. They're very subtle. They're hard to pick up on. And as you can see, I'm getting ready to draw the, the line for the second surgery here. And this is where you'll really be able to pick up on the, the scar. Dr. Feller, who is working the camera, is going to zoom in here. And there it is right there. Now, he's going to point it out. The, the very linear line above it, not those little patches below, that's not the scar. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to draw where I'm taking the strip from for today's surgery and I'm going right through his old incision line. So as you can see, this purple line is going to appear in a second here. That's all the scar is. Everything below that is just a natural separation in the hair. So it just can be easily hidden with a single marker line. Okay, so thank you for watching. Uh, for those who are considering undergoing an FUT procedure, this is what your scarring may look like. It may look even better than this. It may look slightly larger than this. A lot of that depends on physiology. But I do these videos to show that on the whole, um, all scarring from hair transplant surgery is pretty darn good. FUT scars are typically very small like these. Uh, they're very well hidden. We close it in a manner that encourages hair not only to grow above and below it, but also through the scar. You can typically go down pretty darn short on the buzzer still and still do nice fades and nice short cropped haircuts back there. And in exchange for having this little subtle linear incision line in the back, you get out the best quality grafts, you get out a lot of them, and as you can see in these patients, um, it really gives you the ability to do more surgery up the road. So I hope this video was educational and helpful. Uh, I am Dr. Blake Bloxham from Feller & Bloxham Medical. Thank you for watching the video. We will see you in the next one.